Hey, it's good to be with you again, and we are starting a new series. Every year around this time of year, um, I try to do a series on biblical giving. What, what does the Bible say about giving? I find people struggle with that quite often. Uh, what about tithing? Should I tithe? How much should I tithe? Should I give to this? Should I do that? Can I count this as part of that? And so on and so forth. Well, to be honest, the New Testament doesn't have a lot to say about giving financially. Are we expected to give? Yes. Should we give? Yes. How should we give? What the amount we should give? All of those questions are good questions, and hopefully we'll come to those as we go through this series. Um, I want to say up front, um, I was brought up with the belief that there was the mandate of tithing, that every believer was required to tithe uh, pardon my phone, uh, were required to tithe 10% of what you had. Uh, we tithed everything. We got money for birthday, we tithed that. We got uh, earned money, we tithed that. I mean, I was taught tithing from the very beginning. If I got a dollar, uh, I had it, I gave a tithe off of that. And I was glad to do that, but not, not because of a law of a tithe, but simply because as a believer, as a young Christian, I wanted to give. I wanted to be a part of that. I wanted to be a part of evangelism, of missions, of the work of the church, of, of every aspect of that. I wanted to be a part of that. But I disagree with the, with the idea that there is a law of the tithe for the New Testament church. I just don't think that the Bible teaches that. That's not there. Is tithing a part of the Old Testament pattern? Absolutely. No doubt about it. And the reason is that God set that up. Um, Levites and priests uh, were not allowed, they, they didn't own land. They, they were to be taken care of by the people. So a tithe was given, was brought to the Levites. A tithe of that tithe was given to support the priest. Uh, and that is how they uh, were supported because they didn't have farms, they didn't have land. They were given houses within certain territories uh, within the clans of Israel, but they had no property themselves. They belonged to God. Uh, God chose the Levites as opposed to the firstborn of every, uh, every family. And so the Levites were chosen. That tribe of Levi was chosen to take their place. And so uh, as they served God for the rest of Israel, the rest of Israel supported them in that service. They took care of them uh, because they had no means of agriculture. Uh, they had no property. So they were dependent upon that. That's where their wages came from, so to speak. And it was done in food. They, there was a tithe off of your agricultural produce, whether it was animals, you know, flocks or, or fruit or grain, whatever it might be. Uh, there were tithes taken off of that, as well as a, uh, a, a monetary amount that was given to directly to the temple or the uh, tabernacle, uh, whichever time period we're looking at, that supported the priests and the Levites, and for the upkeep of the temple itself. So all of that is involved, and that when you come to the church, there's something different. There's a different uh, aspect to this. So no longer is there this priesthood, no longer is there supporting of that, um, is there Christian giving? Absolutely. Uh, is, should we, do I believe in a tithe? In a sense, I do. I believe that we shouldn't give less than the Old Testament requirement. I think a tithe is where, uh, is a good place to start. I think that's a good idea of where you should begin. But even in thinking in numbers like that, what, what, uh, putting a number on it, well, I've done the minimum or I'm above the minimum, is really to, to, do disservice to what the New Testament teaches. Uh, I think clearly in the Bible, you see that God is a giver of all good gifts. That God is a giving God. He gives generously. And if we have been reformed in that image, if we're to reflect that image of God into the world, then we are going to be generous givers as well. If we're not generous, if we're not giving generously, then there's a problem. We need to look at that. And I think that's what I want to try to get to as we go through this series about um the principles of giving that are in the New Testament. How should Christians give? That's what it's all about. Uh, what is the basis of it? What is the foundation of Christian giving? Uh, how 
Uh, are there any principles about giving? Is there any, any, is there any pattern to it at all? And so that's what we're going to be looking at over the next two or three, four weeks. And so today, I just as an introduction, I want us to get into, because I think the best place is to go to look at a pattern and to look at a basis uh, and to look at um, the, the particular uh, ways of giving, uh, you know, um, is in 1 Corinthians and 2 Corinthians, where it's talking about this collection, an offering, it's sometimes translated offering or collection. The manner in which it is collected, this this money that is being given, and the pattern about that, and the attitude that's involved in that, I think the best place to go is First and Second Corinthians, where this is being applied within the congregational life of the churches. And so today we're going to look at Second uh, Corinthians chapter eight. Now, as as a sort of preamble, uh, there was an offering that Paul sponsored that was being taken up in the various churches that Paul had founded. uh, And that offering was to go to those who were in persecution in Judea, uh, who were experiencing poverty conditions because of persecution. uh, And and so Paul took it upon himself to start this collection in the churches uh, to do ministry. That's what it was all about. And in fact, that is still going on today within the church. Uh, let's say Troy First Baptist Church. Uh, each week there is a, a collection, an offering, if you want to use that term, uh, or a, a giving of funds. And that money goes toward primarily for the most part within this congregation. And it is to do ministry with, whatever that ministry may be. And it also goes out into other areas, whether it's missions, whether it's evangelism, uh, whether it's uh, community needs, whatever that might be, uh, to, to minister with and to meet need, to evangelize, to disciple, whatever that, whatever that might be. So that's still the case, and that's being established with Paul, and I think that's the best place to go. If we're going to have uh, a foundation, and it must be a biblical foundation, right? And if it's going to be applied in the New Testament church, we must see what the New Testament has to say about it. I'm not neglecting the Old Testament about tithing. I think that's important. Uh, but I think that there is a larger context. I think that for, for the New Testament, there is a greater, uh, there is something greater. It is it is all of that. And we'll see that as we look at this. And I'm sort of rambling because I'm, I don't have a text in front of me. All right, so let's dive into this. Um, 2 Corinthians chapter 8. So Paul had already talked to them in 1 Corinthians uh, about this offering and how to do it and the pattern of it and and the practice of it. So now this has gone on for a year, and this is what Paul has to say. And the Corinthians have lagged behind. They haven't finished this offering. They haven't done what they said they would do. Now, brethren, we wish to make known to you the grace of God which has been given in the churches of Macedonia. Important word. The grace of God which has been given to the Macedonian churches. Corinth is in Achaia. These other churches, Thessalonica and other places, are in uh, in Macedonia. And so that in a great ordeal of affliction, in persecution, affliction, uh, their abundance of joy and their deep poverty overflowed in the wealth of their liberality. For I testify that according to their ability and beyond their ability, they gave of their own accord, begging us with much urging for the favor of participation and the support of the saints. So as you look at this, this we're calling this the basis of Christian giving, first of all and foremost, there is the grace of God. It is the grace. It is the grace of giving. Of human nature, we're selfish. Of human nature, we're, we're not gracious. In and of ourselves, we are selfish and we're self-motivated. We, we do what's best for me. Uh, I want to get all I can and can all I get and sit on the can. That's that's us when it comes to our finances. Let's be honest. And 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 if you look at what we spend money on, you and I as believers or anyone for that matter, what we spend money on, that determines where our priorities are. That determines really where our heart is and what we care about. As Jesus said, uh, where your heart, where your treasure is, there your heart is. Uh, you know, the two are bound up together. What you value is what you love. Um, what you love, what you value. Uh, so 
if we say we we love evangelism and we love missions, but we give very little and we spend more on ourselves than we do on anything like that, and I'm talking about proportions, not dollar amount, uh, because the proportion for me, the dollar amount for me might be great, and that dollar same dollar amount might be nothing to you, uh, but to me it might be extravagant. So I think that's very personal. I have to say that up front as well. I think you know. Christian giving is something that is private and personal between them and God. Um, I don't know what people give in this church. I don't want to know what people give in this church. I can't. I don't know what's in your heart. Uh, only God can discern that. What I what I'm trying to say is these biblical principles apply to all of us. And I think this 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 thing about God's grace that without the grace of God, without being born again, without that grace. Uh, we're not going to be generous. We're not going to be generous givers. But the, the, the fact is that these Macedonians were in affliction and in undergoing poverty because of that persecution they were experiencing, which means loss of job, uh, loss of financial means because they are standing for Christ and not the being a part of the idol worship that was part of the, uh, the trade guilds that they belonged to because they had... Uh, Idolatry was part of that, and to deny that was to be uncivil. It was to be not part of society, and so you're you're setting yourself apart, and I'm not having anything to do with you because that's going to bring the curse of the gods, and I don't know what you're doing. That's crazy. Uh, and so they were experiencing severe hardship because of their stance for Christ, and yet because of the grace of God that overflowed in them, that overflowed to generousness. They, they begged for the opportunity to be a part of this. Paul wasn't going to let them. Paul said, yeah, I'm not even going to let y'all be a part of this because you can't, there's nothing. And they said, no, 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 we want to give. We want to be a part. And so read that again with that in mind. To, to you, the, I'm reminding you, he's saying to the rest of us, uh, to the Corinthian church, but to us too who are listening in on this. To you, the grace of God which has been given in the churches of Macedonia. I want you to know about the grace of God which has been given to these churches of Macedonia. That in a great ordeal of affliction, their abundance of joy and their deep poverty overflowed in the wealth of their liberality. Those are key words. The grace of God, uh, uh, the great ordeal uh, of affliction, their abundance of joy, that in the midst of that affliction, in the midst of that poverty, they had an abundance, an overflow of joy, which leads to an overflow of generosity because of the grace of God that had been given to them. And that word given there it has to do with God. He gave it its past tense. He gave it in its perfect tense. He gave it in the past, and it's carrying out its effects into the future. And so that's the first thing, the grace of God. Giving always begins in the grace of God. Gratitude begins in the grace of God. We have nothing except that God has given it to us, and everything that we have is a gift from him. And so here we see that this is overflowing in, in joy and in liberality in their giving uh, of offerings, of finances, for I testify that according to their ability and beyond their ability, they gave of their own accord, begging us with much urging for the favor of participation in the support of the saints. Now, here's the verse I want to get to. And this, not as we had expected, but they first gave themselves to the Lord and to us by the will of God. Christian giving, first and foremost, the foundation for Christian giving, the of it is that, one, the grace of God, two, you have given yourself fully and completely to the Lord. And that means everything that is us to the Lord. All that we have, everything that belongs to us, my being, mind, body, so all of that has been given to Jesus Christ. He owns me lock, stock, and barrel. Now, if that is not true, then... Giving it becomes something, an exercise, and something else. It's not grace. In order for there to be gracious, generous giving, there must be, I'm gracious giving, based in an overflow of grace manifest in us because we've given ourselves to the Lord. That's, the, that's really the foundation of Christian giving. That's the first plank of it. And that's where we're going to stop today because I think I probably said enough. But having said all of that, the basis is this. Until we have given ourselves to the Lord... There's no point in discussing anything else. Once we have given ourselves to the Lord, however, 
then there will be a desire like these Macedonian churches that want to be a part of of Christian ministry that want to give to support it that that you know while I may never evangelize nations in China, in China or India or anywhere else I can give so that I am a part of that. I can give so that I am a part of children being reached for Christ. I can give so that in Vacation Bible School there are materials there for them to do that. I can give so that shoes are taken up I can and sent around the world. I can give so that shoe boxes are taken up and filled with things for boys and girls and young people around the world. And do that in the name of Jesus Christ and be a part of that. And do it with an overflowing generousness, a liberality that comes from the grace of God that from knowing him and because we know him and his generous gift to us in Jesus Christ, we want to give. And so the basis is knowing that we have given ourselves to Jesus Christ and because of the grace of God that is manifest to us, given to us, that leads us to give. Well, we'll talk more about it later as we go through the week and in the weeks to come about the amount and the pattern and so forth and so on. Um, but that's enough for today. And I pray that as we focus on the reason that we give, the necessity of our giving, is not based in law, but it's based in the grace of God. The grace of God as we see it manifested in Jesus Christ, the love of God that is poured out upon us in Christ Jesus. I pray that you know that love uh, because to know that love is to know Jesus Christ. He gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish, have forgiveness of sin, eternal life, and joy indescribable right here and right now, overflowing joy because of the grace of God. I pray that you know that. May God shalom his peace rest upon you always is my prayer uh, now and forever uh, in the name of Jesus. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. God bless you. See you tomorrow.